Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, specifically three new APUs which feature the Ryzen CPU architecture combined with Vega. Then we're going to move over to a very new interesting update for Steam. This one specifically will support shader pre-catching. Now, the reason that I find this very interesting is because it coincides rather nicely with a statement that AMD made just yesterday concerning their support for the Vulkan API. And then we're going to finish the video with a rundown of some new Intel processors which will be released over the next several months. So this information comes to us from Informatica Zero, specifically regarding the mobile processors with Vega graphics. And as usual, don't take this as confirmation until we actually see the processors released. But starting things out with the 2400 and 2200, these are four core eight threads slash four thread parts. So in other words, the 2400 does indeed feature simultaneous multi-threading, whereas the 2200 um, negates that, gets rid of it. However, the biggest difference is going to be in the graphics. The 2400 features Vega 11, whereas the Vega 8 is the graphics option for the 2200. If you believe the rumours, this means that the 2400 has an amazing and astounding 11 compute units, whereas the Vega 8 only has 8 compute units, or to put it another way, 512 shaders. Now, there is a configurability with this specific set of processors. In other words, it's 65 or 35 watts variable, and we've discussed how that um, functions before with the 2500U. Speaking of the U's, there's also an additional uh, processor, uh, which is a Ryzen 3 2300U. It has a Vega 6 graphics, which I imagine is gonna provide an ample amount of gaming performance to crush Crisis 3 at 4K. There may be a slight amount of sarcasm there, just for your FYI. However, details concerning the actual CPU side of things are less clear, but we can imagine it's not going to be particularly amazing. Oh, and a very small set of updates concerning other AMD uh, processors. So the Ravenridge processor that I discussed yesterday with 1792 stream processors, supposedly a few other um, sources have popped out and said it's definitely going to be a quad core, but it's going to be an eight thread uh, that is, of course, with uh, 1,792 uh, stream processors, 28 compute units, and once again, it does look like uh, Sysoft Transret is not reporting this information accurately. And also another small update concerning the new Ryzen processors. Uh, there was rumours that it was going to be running at 5.1 gigahertz and, you know, additional cores. However, it does look like that's fake, with a couple of different versions of that image doing the rounds on the internet. And honestly, I did say in the original video, I'm quite suspect of it, especially with the clock speed side of things, especially when you factor in that with the number of cores. But as usual, we can only wait for an actual release of the processor to really know for certain. My biggest uh, concern with the rumor isn't just the fact that it does have that amount of cores and that amount of clock speed, but it would pretty much negate the need to buy Threadripper. So I don't think AMD are going to release anywhere near a 12-core processor anytime soon for the mainstream. But once again, AMD have proven us to be wrong in the past. With that said, anyway, uh, slightly improved clock speed slash IPC of the current Ryzen architecture, which is, of course, what we're going to be getting with the new Pinnacle Ridge. I have a feeling that will be absolutely enough to really thwart Intel's plans for the short term with Coffee Lake. But as usual, we can only wait. So there is a new feature on Steam, and this one's actually somewhat gone under the radar for many, um, and it's a recent client update. I'll read this out verbatim. New feature, shader pre-caching whenever possible. Depending on the hardware and driver support, Steam can download pre-compiled shaders for your specific video card. This reduces load times and in-game stuttering during the first few launches of OpenGL and Vulkan-based games on supported hardware. This, few, this feature excuse me, may use a small amount of additional bandwidth as Steam uploads and analyzes shader usage reports after each run of the game. The feature can then be disabled via a new entry in the settings dialog box." End quote. Now the reason I find this very interesting is because this coincides rather nicely with news that AMD are basically throwing a hell of a lot of support to Vulkan. 
and this is not a verbatim quote, but AMD pretty much said uh, yesterday in an interview with PC Games N that they know what's coming, and that's why they're putting support behind Vulkan, despite the fact that there's not a huge amount of games now which, of course, utilise Vulkan, although the list is pretty impressive. It's not that far behind DirectX 12. You could check that out, by the way, on uh, Wikipedia. It's got a list of DirectX 12 and Vulkan games. Um, and, of course, OpenGL is also still rather popular, uh, particularly for developers who are uh, producing things for Linux as well. Now, my personal takeaway, and this is my personal view, this is not the view of a developer, and this is not the view of um, you necessarily, but I do feel that DirectX 12 has its place. I think DirectX 12 is a, still a really nice appy, um, despite the fact that at the start we weren't seeing huge performance gains, but obviously as developers are now uh, redeveloping their engines and you know tweaking the engines and really getting used to it so they're building games essentially from the ground up with dx12 in mind and uh, large amounts of processor cores in mind directx12 is already starting to fly by itself however it is essentially limited to the xbox slash windows ecosystem whereas the benefit of vulcan is it's not and essentially you can port it with i'm not saying minimal work but it requires considerably less work to port a game to let's say oh i don't know linux from windows or perhaps even to a mobile system and don't forget also the switch uses um a vulcan as well now with opengl and vulcan and this pre-compiled uh, pre support uh, with pre-caching, pre excuse me, of shaders, it's going to be very interesting to see how this uh, how this all tallies up. And obviously, one of the things that Steam don't want is DirectX 12 to really get a stranglehold in the market because ultimately they want to sell you games from the store, not necessarily UWP games, which is a lot of the time what happens with DirectX 12. For example, with Gears of War. It's not available on Steam, is it? Gears of War uh, 4. Which is a shame. It's a really good game, by the way, if you've not played it. So, I'm going to be very curious to see how this develops over the next several weeks. I'm actually trying to rearrange the interview currently with um, the uh, Kronos group. I'm not quite sure who I'm going to be interviewing yet. I don't know if it's going to be Neil or one of the other heads. Uh, I was actually supposed to have it like a week or so ago, but I just was absolutely battered with a cold and also on top of that I was trying to get out those couple of reviews I've still got a full um, Fred Ripper review to do plus as well a Ryzen 3 review to do plus some other bits and pieces so I've just been really uh, obviously at the end of this year it's kind of hectic with people going on holiday so it might have to slip till early next year but I do definitely want to discuss with them shader pre-caching and what they feel is going to be happening with the market anyway finally another piece of Intel news you might recall yesterday how Intel are going to be performing steep cuts, that's a quote from CRN.com, with the Intel Inside platform. Well, that doesn't mean that Intel are just saying, eh, actually, we're going to be stepping away from desktop computers and mobile computers and that type of stuff. No, of course not. Uh, when it comes to budget computers, for example, two-in-one tablets, data entries, systems, in other words, you know, uh, word processors essentially for the office, you don't need an i7. It doesn't require me to tell you that. So, Gemini Lake is going to be offered in five SKUs, and these start with the Pentium Silver N5000, the J5005, the Celeron N4100, the N4000, um, and the J4105 and J4005. And those are a mixture of desktop and mobile chips. Now, I won't read out all the specifications because obviously I'll be here for way too long. However, these are mixtures of Intel Pentium and Celeron processors, which once again uh, are not just for the desktop lineup, but also for the mobile lineup. These are actually fairly decent. And while, of course, they're not going to be running, I don't know, like 3DS Max at the fastest uh, rendering speeds, and you certainly are not going to be able to, you know, do 4K video editing on a system like this. Well, I guess you could if you're happy to work at about half a frame a second. Well, you know, these machines are going to be absolutely perfect for basic web browsing or once again for data entry machines or perhaps even for overclocking um, if you have the right setup and you can kind of tweak the clock speeds enough. It, it might be good enough for like a small form factor 
kind of system, especially if you're doing more streaming. For example, if you're streaming uh, from a high-end rig, let's say you have, I don't know, like a, a high-end GeForce gaming system that's, let's say, in your study, and you have one of these smaller form factor PCs, which, once again, doesn't require much energy, and it's quite quiet. You could make it up largely with passive cooling. This type of system might be absolutely perfect, and it will be interesting, especially with the Pentiums, to see how they compete with the i3s, given that these do have four logical, uh, sorry, four cores, rather than, um, you know, the the hyper-threading situation of uh, an i3, of old. Of course, this situation did change an awful lot with Coffee Lake, but these processors, at the end of the day, are going to be very cheap. So, maybe for budget-orientated, you know, um, media boxes or Steam streaming machines, I do realise there are other ways, of course, of streaming uh games to steam but at the end of the day if you do want to do other stuff as well then this might be quite a nice little option for you and it does have an integrated uh, uhd graphics 60 sorry 605 i was about to say 65 605 which at the end of the day is not exactly going to be once again playing crisis at 4k but it'll be enough to do basic tasks with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now